Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wave at WPI, checking with 70407R Refraction coming out of New York State. Refraction doing a full rebuild on their robots, so really excited to see how it does. Just checked them out on the field a little bit ago, and they're looking absolutely phenomenal here at the Wave. Take a look at uh, this robot. We're going to be covering a full overview. Lots of cool stuff. Really like their blocker and their whacker. Got some cool stuff going on with programming as well, too. So let's learn more about the scheme coming up here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Braxton, let's start off with your robot. Like I said, we're going to do a full overview here, but there's a lot of cool stuff you have going on. So talk to me about uh, your intake, uh, and then we're going to go into your uh, D-score and your wings as well. I saw you on the field earlier. Your game piece acquisition is just awesome, so I'd love to just hear what's gone into that full process. Okay, so um, on the front of our robot right here, we have our intake, which um, it's 600 RPM. Um, it's got, we've got an 11-watt motor here. Um, we use flex wheels on the front of our, on the front of our intake. Um, because at our last competition, we had a sprocket and rubber band style intake, and the sprocket basically snapped in half um, from defense that we were obtaining. So we redesigned the robot, and with it came a flex wheel intake. Um, and so it just it spins like so. Um, the tri balls they come up here and they sit on this um, the C channel here with rubber mesh. Um, so that we can easily just intake and outtake and they don't like just slide on the ground. Um, over here we have our wings, um, which go out like that. Um, it's also pretty simple. We have the piston right here. Um, it's not locking, but um, the wings still have a pretty much power because the um, we have the, the, there's a lot of air going through the wings. Um, and something you'll notice about the wings and really a all throughout the robot is we use a bunch of different screw joints which is when you use a screw for your like the hinge of your system um, we basically use those anywhere where the motor we don't need an axle for a motor um, the only exception being this front part here everything else including like the cat which we'll go into later um, is all on screw joints and then lastly um, we have this D score mechanism right here this mechanism also helps us touch the post while we're shooting um, so that we are maintaining constant contact with the mesh load bar. I know you talked on your intake, you did some modifications, but in regards to like your, your wings and your D-score, did you have to make any big chassis modifications at all uh, in order to accommodate anything new on there? So the D-score was not something that we had on our old robot. We just kind of drove up to the bar and touched it with a corner of it. Sure. But um, so we, we, we added this as a new mechanism because we found that it was easy to push us off. And so with this, it makes it significantly harder to do. Um, and we, I mean, you have these standoffs right here that kind of hook down into the yeah. things so that they, um, so that it's like, it kind of locks into the match load zone. Um, as for the wings, they're basically the same. Only difference is that we had them on the back of our robot. So now we've moved them to the front because it's easier to drive and control. That's a big thing that we focus on this robot. We wanted it to just be easy to drive because the easier it is to drive, the better we can drive. As we keep going on this robot, Max, let's go into your uh, blocking mechanisms. I saw uh, on the field once again, it looked really nice, uh, really big reach on it as well too. And then you actually bring a, uh, a 2X uh, type of hang as well too. So I'd love to hear about those two different ones and maybe any feature changes looking uh, for those two. Absolutely. So the hanging mechanism and the blockers actually go hands in hand. So as you see, when this blocker extends up, it's actually two pieces. There is this longer bar, which we have two single acting pistons driving. And then there's a secondary bar over here. Now what happens is, as the larger bar swings upward, it tensions the shring, which will lead to an overhang. This makes it significantly more difficult for robots with higher azimuths on their shooters to shoot over this thing. Now this also goes hand in hand with the hanging mechanism by holding it down. What the hanging mechanism will do is when we drive over to the overhang bar, these wheels will guide the bars up and over onto them, which hangs us just an inch off the ground, which gives us an eight-seer hang. Now moving on over here, 
we actually have our contingency plan, our backup, which is a secondary hanging mechanism. This allows us to drive over the middle uh, divider and hang on it. It's only an A tier hang as well, but it works with our teammates, because if our teammates have an exact same hanging mechanism that drives over the overhang, this will allow us to hang as well. This kind of ties in with our philosophy of Jack of all trades, king of none. We want to be able to work with anybody and everybody, no matter what their robot does. Yeah, I really like the versatility uh, that you're able to bring with that. Um, looking at hangs, you said they're both AT hangs. Are you looking at doing anything higher in the future, or is having that versatility potentially more important than having like a higher tier hang for you? The versatility is definitely more important, as hanging higher will not really allow us to score many more points, because it sacrifices some of the versatility of our robot. Yeah. We'll have to you know, dedicate motors to hanging it which would take away from other areas such as an intake. Matthew, as we start to wrap up on this robot, talking about the Whacker uh, that's on your robot, uh, and then we have uh, some cool things from a code standpoint you, know, you want to talk about as well, so give us a good highlight of uh, what's going on with your bot. All right, well, here's the catapult. It's 40 RPM with just a 10 millisecond delay, and it's actually got a macro, so we just hit it, the button once, and it'll continue uh, hitting those tri balls. And then we have a couple sensors. We obviously have the inertial sensor down there, and then we have a rotational sensor over on this side, right over here. And of course, we use PIDs, proportional integral derivatives, just to make every action in an autonomous just a little bit more accurate. So for PIDs, you mentioned that you're getting uh, autonomous feedback on it. Have you ever looked at potentially doing anything from feedback during teleop uh, for PIDs? Uh, no, we have not. But we could look into that because, of course, accuracy is very important. And the more accurate we are, probably, obviously, the better we'll play. So, Well, Refraction, really looking forward to seeing, of course, how you do here at the Wave at WPI. So can't wait to see that performance. But thanks a lot for taking time. Tell us about your team and your robot. And good luck uh, at this event and the rest of the competition season. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.